بسم الله من اتبع رضوانه سبل السلام The meaning of this ayah is indeed a scripture has come to you from Allah but before that it says an enlightenment a light a luminosity has come to you from Allah and a scripture by which Allah guides whomever wills to be guided unto the straits of peace. Straits here is S-T-R-A-I-T-S. Straits of peace. Paths, roadways, accesses to peace. Provided that we meet with his satisfaction. As a matter of taqwa, and taqwa is one of these words that has been, that has lost its original meaning, and the details are plenty, but to put it in a few words, there's no such thing as piety. We, the Muslims, you and I, we have been subjected to a biblical translation of the Qur'an. We want to liberate ourselves, our minds, our mentalities. We want to liberate that in order for us to liberate our physical selves. And beyond that, our stolen lands and properties. A taqwa simply means avoiding Allah's immediate presence. His presence is there for the purpose of truth and justice. Al-Haq, another word that is generalized as truth, partially right. But also Al-Haq has a much more extended meaning than just truth. It is also justice. Truth is verbal. Truth is rational. Truth is theoretical. But justice is practical. Justice is palpable. Justice is real. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we care, and I, as your brother and your fellow Muslim, if we care to just slow down a little, I know many of us would like to read the Qur'an very fast, and if the Qur'an, Allah's book, is full of barakah, it's full of blessings, it's full of bounties. It can touch a person's heart even though that person has never, ever understood the meanings of the ayah. That's how penetrating Allah's final scripture to mankind is. In this regard, I will relate to you a true story. A person got a scholarship to go to one of the republics in what used to be the Soviet Union. One of those areas that is predominantly Muslim. It was a communist rule. So he was a student there and other students, Muslims, got to know him. They knew that he knew Arabic. So they invited him to one of their sessions. And they secretly, because it was a communist rule and there was atheism and all of this, and it was official and it was severe. So they, what you may say, clandestinely met. And these students, these are university students, they come to this brother, they bring him a copy of the Quran. They tell him, could, could you read this Quran for us? And he began reading the Qur'an. 
And then all of a sudden, after reading several ayat and turning the page, he looks around and he sees most of those around him were crying. They didn't understand any word that was pronounced by him. But it touched them. This is how penetrative the Qur'an, Allah's words are. And then after the session was done and he read the pages that he read from the Qur'an, he asked, why is everyone, why, is, why are most of you weeping? And they looked at him and they said, because we don't know how to read the Qur'an. We belong to it. We want to understand it. But we can't. And the left, that's understood. You can understand something like this. But what may be missed by some of us is that the Qur'an captures people's hearts even when they don't understand the meaning. It is full of meaning. And this is the area that we have to work on and develop among ourselves. A problem interferes here. That is, some people who know how to read the Qur'an don't feel the responsibility of teaching the Qur'an. And others who cannot read the Qur'an don't feel the responsibility of learning the Qur'an. <coughs> and here most of the time is where we find some of these issues arising. It should not be that way. A person who doesn't know the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, understanding it directly without an interpreter or a translator, that person who doesn't understand it should feel the urge in him or her to learn the Qur'an. Likewise, a person who knows the meanings of these ayat without a translator or interpreter, a person who can read and to whatever degree understand the meanings of the Qur'an, that person has to feel the responsibility of teaching the Qur'an. When those corresponding feelings and thoughts <coughs> with equality coincide with each other, then we begin to have a Qur'anic family, a Qur'anic community, a Qur'anic society. When you read Allah's final book, it takes you on journeys to the, to the heavens, to the stratospheres. It takes you on journeys through the world and its terrain, the oceans, the seas, the continents. It takes you on a time journey from this world, the immediate life that we are in, to an akhirah. What we find ourselves with here is a limited knowledge of this Qur'an. This is the area that we have to work on together. I don't know the programs around. I know there's sincerity in the administrations of the Masajid and the Islamic centers. But I pray that we will reach a time when we can work more on this area to understand Allah's words without interference from those who don't wish us well and they love to see. There's an ayah in the Quran. Ya ayuha al-lazina an surat al-ma'idah. Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu la tattakhidu al-yahuda wa al-nasara awliya. 
O oh, you who are securely committed to Allah, Iman is a responsibility. Whenever you hear the word, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in the Qur'an, remind yourself that Allah is speaking to me about a responsibility. And in this ayah, it says, Don't designate. Don't ally yourselves with political Jews and political Christians. Some translations have it, don't be friends with Jews and Christians. How can this be? If we are permitted to marry Jews and Christians, how can we not be friends with them? But it is our insufficient understanding of the Qur'an, whereby you see the word al-Nasara and the word al-Yahud, in some ayat meaning theological Jews or theological Christians, in other ayat it means ideological or political Jews or ideological or political Christians. And because we still waking up from the slumber of many generations, because we have not updated or we have not surfaced these practical meanings of these ayat into our life, then we, you have our enemies jumping on the bandwagon of, look at these Muslims, look how uh, unfriendly they are. And some of them will go beyond that and become very frank and they will say, look how hostile Muslims are. Any Muslim knows there's no hostility in our hearts. The prophets of Allah, when they came to their errant societies, their wayward communities, they would say to them, Inni akhafu alaykum azab yawmin azim. I fear for you. These are Allah's messengers, Allah's prophets. I fear for you the torment of a tremendous day. There's no hostility here. You don't sense any hostility. The only type of friction serious friction you will find is when Nuh, after almost a millennium, thousand years, says, Rabbi la taj'al ala al-ardi min al-kafirina dayyara. O my sustainer, have not anyone who is in denial of your power and authority a resident of this planet. That's the extent of it. But there's no hostility. We want to show, it's our response. Brothers and sisters, think for a moment. We have in our possession Allah's last, final scripture and revelation. All of the other societies of the world throughout history they no longer have Allah's words we have it so that means we have a big responsibility when people in this world they are going in every other direction except to Allah and we can show them the way this is the way this is the direct access path to Allah it's a tremendous responsibility. How in your own lives, what you hear from friends, from neighbors, from associates, from uh, co-workers, from classmates, etc. What do you hear? Someone knows they want to spend their weekend in Georgetown. Well, now because of the pa pandemic, there's other things going on. But anyways, they want to go and have a good time somewhere. Or they want to get high. Or they want to join some type of, let's say, troublemaking gang or something like that. All of these are symptoms that we have a disease in our environment that has many manifestations. And the cure is what we have in the masjid, in the books, the pages that we are reading.
This is the cure for these people who in an indirect way are calling out. One of the great reformers, let me call him that, one of the great reformers of the past century, he used to go, this was in one of the Muslim countries, I don't want to get specific because I know people, sometimes they take it personally. He used to go to bars. He used to go to nightclubs. He used to go to brothels to speak this word of Allah to penetrate the hearts and the minds of those who had been victimized by society. And he had an impact that still lives up until today. This is the heart, the inclusive, the caring, the careful heart that has to remedy individuals and societies that have gone astray. This Quran has to be liberated from centuries of those who, they, they, at one time there was about a hundred years ago, a little less than a hundred years ago, there was a wave in the Arabic speaking countries to destroy the language of the Quran. They said, oh, this Arabic language is too backwards, it's too archaic, it's outdated, it's hard to learn, all of this stuff. So, they, they, so what's the solution? They said, why don't you write your language in the Latin script? <clears throat> instead of B, instead of bat, you write B. Instead of F, you write, instead of fat, you write F. Instead of mean, you write M. And you keep on going like this and get rid of this language. That didn't work. They tried. There was a serious strategy of de-Arabizing the Quran. And it worked in one of the Muslim countries. They write now their language in the Latin script. If not, there's another country. I don't want to mention names. But it happened. And it's a living fact in the world today. So they come, now they go to plan B. Plan A didn't work, let's go to plan B. What is plan B? Okay, you, you people who read and write Arabic, well, we don't understand these small vowels, the diacritics, like Akasal Bamba Sukun. We don't understand this. So why don't you, when you write your Fathas and Kasras and Bambas and Sukun, why don't you write it in the Latin alphabet? Put an A instead of the Fatha. Put a U instead of a Bamba. Put an I instead of the Kas. These plans, this is a serious matter. Now it comes, I'm going to, uh, I know I have a couple of minutes. I'm going to try now to go to just one more issue, and that is the sensitivity of those who are not Arabic speakers. Sometimes nationalism gets on our nerves. And one of the dividing issues is, among we, the Muslim, we're a Muslim family in this world. Anyone who thinks about Muslims in the world outside of being a family, they have to do some adjustment. We're a Muslim family in this world. Why is it, I ask, that some people feel that they will lose their identity if they learn the language of the Qur'an. Now, people are speaking multiple languages. No one is losing his identity. People, students go here to school, they, they learn Spanish, they learn French. They lose the, uh, their origins. Someone's telling them to deny their origins if they do that. So what if, how, is it, how does it become a burden? to learn the language of the Qur'an. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiya. Verily, we have made this accessible, this revelation, we have brought it down and made it accessible as an Arabic Qur'an. So we should all become Arabic speakers. You can, you can remain whoever you are as far as your culture, your history, your heritage, there's nothing wrong with that. 
No one's telling you that to give up on that. But there are wars now because of that. There are wars. Innocent Muslims are being killed because of this misunderstanding among us. الحمد لله الذي هدى صلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى Dear brothers and sisters, we are in need of Allah أنتم الفقراء إلى الله The ayah in the Quran says you are in need of Allah you are poverty stricken when it comes to Allah. That's how much we need Him. And He extended, I am metaphorically using this, of course, you can't understand this in uh, physical terms, but He has extended His hand to us. Please ext let us extend our hands to Him. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا صل على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم ربنا بارك على محمد وآل محمد ربنا بارك على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة